for for being here with us. Would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, yeah. Thanks for having me. I'm uh, Bill Parker. Um, I'm the guy who made the Jedi with a GoPro video. Uh, I'm working on another one right now. And yeah, I do. You're your sequel to, to Jedi with a GoPro you're working on? Yes, sequel. That's uh, that's what I'm doing with all my free time right now. <laughs> and where is this one shot in Joshua Tree as well? Uh, some of it. Some of it's in Joshua Tree. Some of it is shot in, uh, it's called Red Rock. Calif uh, Red Rock State Park, California. So awesome. Have you already shot it or are you you in the editing phase or uh yeah, we shot it. Um we have we went back to the location like five times and reshot footage. Uh and now I literally have fourteen days to get it done because it airs uh in fourteen days. <laughs> so what's the deadline for? Oh well actually um I uh, have this Discovery Channel um, mini documentary that they are making about me in this what? video. Um, it's well, first of all, it's Discovery Canada, so it's not as cool. Or maybe it is. I don't know. Uh, I'm not. You know, it is pretty cool. Not as popular, but um, they're doing. They have a show. It's a science and technology show, and they're doing a bunch of mini documentaries for one of their episodes leading up to the Star Wars movie. And I'm one of the subjects they picked. And I literally, when we were filming a couple of weeks ago out in the desert, I was out there doing my thing, you know, and I had a crew following me around and like interviewing me and stuff. So their, their show airs in two weeks and I need to have it done by them by then so that they can air their show. So I actually like have a real deadline for the, unlike the first one when I, you know, could kind of just do it however I wanted. Um, yeah. Yeah, so that's that's why I that's have a deadline. That's exciting now. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. It's definitely, you know, I, I, I spent so much time planning out the shots and the things I needed to do that when I got there, I kind of had forgotten I was going to be on camera and I didn't really think about that. Or, you know, most people would probably you'd be like, I'm going to be on camera. I need to, like, shave my face or, you know, look nice. And I'm just like, I need to get these shots. And I wasn't thinking about it at all. And then I got there. I was like, oh, that's right. I got to be on camera. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, like what you've worked in the past or what you're currently working on? Yeah, I uh, do. Uh, oh, I, I do visual effects. That's uh, my career, um, which is, you know, doing uh, effects work for television and film uh, in California. Um, I pretty much, you know, I work on a bunch of different TV shows and some movies here and there and I freelance on the side um and yeah that's pretty much what i do but i also am a filmmaker uh passionately and that's kind of where i would like to go and more of a directing and producing and writing uh direction um but for right now the money maker is visual effects so yeah awesome what, what and what uh inspired you from a very young age to do that i, I mean what, what motivated you from from a kid to have this passion that like this kind of thirst to continue. Yeah. Um, honestly, if you ask any visual effects person, probably 50% of them will say they do what they do because of star Wars. Um, and that's definitely <laughs> mostly the case for me as well. Uh, There's... but it really, it really, you know, comes from just, you know, growing up with a, very vivid imagination and not being able to settle for the real world and wanting to make things that aren't real and, you know, immerse yourself in, in the things that you imagined as a kid. And, you know, that's kind of how it happened. I was like, I'm imagining this thing. I want to make this thing. So I learned how to make the thing and now I make the thing for money. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome. I guess it's always awesome when you can kind of turn uh, your childhood passion into something that makes you adult money. Right. Right. Adult money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I know that, you know, you said in the, the behind the scenes for Jedi with the GoPro that it take, took you uh, like over a month just to edit. What what kind of motivates you to do those kind of things in your free time? Um, it's you know, it, it is it is tough uh, to keep that motivation. But um, I think it's just the idea that if I don't sit and do this and, and, and spend all my free time doing this, um, you know, most people aren't doing this. So it kind of gives you an opportunity to kind of set yourself apart in a sense. And, you know, I think it's just, it really, 
is if you're passionate about something, um, you know, you don't look at it as work. You don't look at it as a nine to five. You, you know, are more willing to do it in your free time. Uh, and since, you know, I can't walk from one room in my apartment to another room without swinging a fake lightsaber at something or imagining <laughs> something exploding around me, you know, that's just ingrained in how my brain works. So to just be able to make stuff uh, and wow people, I guess, is kind of all the motivation I need most of the time. <laughs> I wanted to kind of point out just um, some of the behind the scenes stuff, because that's where a lot of our, our students' questions and our backpackers' questions are coming from. Uh, so I wanted to, to be able to share um, just like a little bit of your behind the scenes and then ask you some questions if that's okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's a screen. Nice. Yeah. So this is a, uh, you're so behind the scenes. Obviously, one. most of the work in the video takes place here. It took over a month to do all the effects because I don't really have a team or anything. In order to animate all the stormtroopers in the video, I decided to do my own motion capture for all of them. I use a program called iPiSoft Motion Capture Studio and plug in an Xbox Connect into the computer, lay down a few mattresses, and we're ready to go. Nice. It's a clean apartment there. <laughs> the Xbox Connect has a depth sensor that tracks all my body movements, and I'm able to take that information and apply it to the characters in 3D Studio Max. So, so Bill, can you tell me a little bit about this, uh, just kind of uh, how this works, and, and um, if, if there's anything else other than that that you use? Because I think uh, one of our students, Alex, wanted to know just more specifically, uh, what do you use to create a lot of your visual effects? I like the majority of them. Yeah, um, that is definitely, that's a, it's a big question, but uh, you know, I, I use a couple programs primarily um, to do most of the effects work. Uh, most sure. of it um, is done in either Adobe After Effects or Nuke from the Foundry. Okay. And, uh, you know, most people know After Effects and know Adobe, but Nuke is kind of more the motion picture high-end version of those things. Sure. Um, so those are the two main things. And then I use, uh, it's called Autodesk 3D Studio Max for all of the characters and ships and stuff like that. Genga also wanted to know about um, how is animation a big part of movie making? Um, do you see like animation as uh, a gap between fantasy and reality? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, effects work is responsible for making all of the things that can't be real, you know, making them real on the screen. And, you know, that's how most of us, uh, kind of got into it was we had these, I didn't, you know, strictly want to get into visual effects. I wanted to make these movies that had these crazy ideas and stuff. I didn't want to make a dialogue scene with two people. I wanted to make planets and ships and all this stuff and the only way i could do that because i didn't have budgets and i couldn't fly a ship out into space was to learn how to do it you know with effects and optical illusions and stuff like that uh so you know it's definitely it, it has opened up that world of fantasy and, and all the things that you know now we can with the way technology has progressed we can basically anything you can imagine visually can be done at this point um and it's definitely opened up the doorway to all of that, I guess. <laughs> sure. Um, yeah. we, we asked this question uh, to our last people that we did a podcast with, actually, uh, but it's way more relevant in this one. Um, and I, I think we know the answer, but I, I think it might be more interesting than, than they think. But they want to know if you're a Star Wars fan or Star Trek, majority-wise. Yes. And, and I know it's hard to distinguish sometimes, but majority. I don't know like, why. I feel like I'm one of the few like who is just – in love with both you know I, I grew up with both and i think each one has its own specific thing that it caters to with me you know star wars has like the best action and some you know uh, the most emotional scenes and then star trek has you know all the thinking and philosophy stuff that my brain needs so sure. uh you know, everyone says Star Trek is boring or Star Wars is too action-y, and, and I think that they both have their place, at least for me. Um, so it's it's very hard for me to choose. I think, you know, the movies, I like Star Wars more, and the TV show of Star Trek, obviously, I like more. Which Star really... Trek? The Next Generation? 
or both. Yeah, next generation. That's you know Captain Picard. He's uh, sure. he's a role model. He's a great guy. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> um, and then the last thing I just want to know if you have any suggestions uh, if if somebody's really passionate about um, making film but they just don't know where to start. Um, how did you start, and what, what suggestions would you have for a youngster kind of trying it for the first time? Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's tough to, you know, I can say kind of like what my history was and, and what got me to where I am. I'm not sure that that's necessarily what I would recommend. Um, but, you know, I, I think if you're passionate about something, you know, don't make excuses, um, to not pursue that. Uh, you know, I, I, through high school and college, this is like all I did with my free time almost to almost to a negative extent where it was like, I didn't go to like parties. I didn't go do a lot socially. I just like came home and I just made movies and I sat, I didn't do good in classes cause I just sat there and thought about it all day. And then when I got home, I, you know, made the stuff that I was thinking about all day. So, you know, there's, there's, you know, an ex there's, there's a, there's a line to be drawn somewhere. Sure. Um, but you know, I think, I think um, if you are passionate about it, definitely don't put it off don't you know I, I feel like there was a lot of people in college who you know were there for film and the only films they made were the ones that they were required to make for class um and because of that you know they didn't have an, a, a very exceptional reel or demo reel or portfolio at the end whereas like for my portfolio at the end of everything i didn't use a single film that i had been required to make because i had made so many in my free time um that I didn't need to use any of the ones I used for class. So, you know, I, it's, uh, it, it's, I think it, it re just requires taking action. It's really easy to be like, Oh, I want to make, you know, I want to be an actor. I want to make movies. I want to be a writer, but I'm going to sit here and, you know, play a video game or something like, and you know, there's nothing wrong with that stuff, especially, you know, video games are great because they inspire that imagination and stuff. Um, so I think there's just figuring out where that line is between, you sure. know, living your life and not you know <laughs> focusing all of your attention on something and not being able to you know do classes and you know have relationships and stuff but also um you know having taking it a little bit seriously and knowing that it's really not it doesn't have to be a dream it's it, especially nowadays a lot of the stuff is quite attainable um those are my rantings and thoughts on that i guess <laughs> So, so pursue your passion and have action with it, but also try and find some slight balance within that. Yeah. And, you know, I also think one of the biggest things that I wish I had done more of is, is finding people, uh, finding a community, finding people that have those same interests. Um, because most of the growing and most of the learning that you do, you, you know, you can sit online and wikipedia and learn all you want but most of the actual practical knowledge i have comes from working with other people and conversing with these people about these sort of subjects so um sure. you know there, was, there were times in in high school and stuff where most of my friends were not really into what i was into and i was like dudes let's make a movie and they're like no let's you know do this other thing and and yeah i think being surrounded by people who are more you know would cater to that sort of development, I think is also a huge thing. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And that's what we're trying to kind of cultivate with our, our group is, is, is finding that passion and the, the fact that we have such a large network of students that probably have a similar passion and then acting upon that. Uh, right. So I think it's wonderful advice for sure. So yeah. Bill, we just want to thank you uh, for taking the time out of your busy day to, to come and talk to us and, and answer our questions. And um, we just really appreciate it. And we will be looking out for the second installment of uh, Jedi with a GoPro.